Welcome back to another day of devotions at Bethel Baptist Church. And today, if you take your Bible, uh, we're going to be in the book of 1 Timothy again. And we're going to be looking at verse 12, 1 Timothy 1, verse 12. And let's begin reading. Verse 12, it says, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it in ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. How be it for this cause I obtain mercy that in me first Christ Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a path which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Now unto King, unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time to look into your word this morning. I ask you to help me as I speak, uh, that you would guide my tongue and my thoughts, and my mind, uh, that you would uh, help me to say the things that you would want uh, me to say uh, that would be a help to those listening. I ask that you'd help us as we look today uh, in First Timothy and we look at Paul's charges uh, to Timothy and his encouragement here, uh, Lord, to uh, just continue on uh, forgetting those things which are behind and pressing on. Uh, Lord, we thank you for these things. Lord, help us today and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Regardless of your past and what kind of uh, sinner or what kind of person uh, past you've had, God still wants to use you in his service. So how uh, can you and I be used of God? Uh, that is, how can God use us? And here I see Paul uh, giving Timothy, uh, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, uh, three reasons that we can be used of God. Now first, just briefly, uh, in verse 12, uh, we see a reason, is, a reason that we can be used of God is that God sees us differently than we or others see us. Uh, in verse 12, he says, uh, I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who, th who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. He, Jesus Christ saw something in Paul that Paul did not see uh, the moment he got saved, the moment uh, he put his trust in Christ. He, there wasn't anything of value in Paul, uh, but God saw something that he could use, a, a, a willing vessel uh, that was Paul. And so ourselves, if we're willing... Uh, and we are uh, empty of ourselves, and we want uh, God to use us. Uh, it is Him that is doing the work through us. Um, we can do all things through Christ, which strengthens us. And uh, the power to do ministry, the power to serve others, uh, to share the gospel, is not in ourselves, but it is through the power of God. And so, secondly, uh, the reason why God can use us in the ministry is that God saved us uh, God saved and he used the chief of sinners. Uh, Paul gives a little bit of his background. Uh, he says, Who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. This, this Paul, uh, he uh, was a hater of Christians. He uh, despised the, the work of uh, Christ and Christianity. Uh, he sought to kill those who followed Christ, and uh, he must have been uh, happy uh, when Christ was crucified. He must have been relieved that this man who was causing all this ruckus uh, was finally put to an end, but in reality, it wasn't. And so, uh, 
We thank the Lord that he's risen again. But if God can save a man like Paul, who uh, was very against uh, Christianity, very against all the things uh, of God, even though he was a Jew, he was very against the true, uh, the truth and the, the Messiah that had come. Uh, if God can save him, then he can save a sinner like us, a sinner like me and you. He can save not only us, but he can save your family member. Uh, he can save that family member who wants nothing to do with God. He can save that family member who hates it every time uh, you bring up uh, Jesus Christ with them and they just turn around and walk away and don't want to listen. And he can save uh, the very pious man who thinks he has it all and he's religious and he doesn't need uh, anything more because he does all this for God. And he can save the godless man who says there is no God. If God can save the chief of sinners, he can save anyone. And so the reason why God can use us is that he sees us differently than how we see ourselves. God saved the chief of sinners so he can save us. And lastly, God gets the most glory when he uses the weak and those he's redeemed. Uh, in saving and using the chief of sinners, Christ's long-suffering was made evident. Uh, his character of long-sufferingness, uh, we see in Second Peter in chapter 3 and verse 9, We see it says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, where not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God, through the Lord Jesus Christ, is he's long suffering. He's allowing us to come to him. Uh, he doesn't uh, give us one chance or two chances or three chances. He gives us so many chances. Uh, and God can use us, even though, uh, despite of our uh, our past. And so we also learn about uh, Paul. He spoke about his thorn of the flesh in, uh, in Corinthians. Uh, he had this problem, this weakness uh, that he couldn't uh, get over. And he asked the Lord three times to remove it from him. But the, the Lord uh, said, no, but my grace is sufficient for you. Uh, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. And so we must, uh, if we're going to serve, if we're going to be used of God, we must do it uh, through Christ's power and his strength. And so in light of all this, and as Paul is uh, writing to his son in the faith, Timothy, he gives uh, his praise to God in verse 17. Now unto king eternal, the eternal king, he reigns forever. Uh, he's sovereign because he is the ruler of all. And we don't need to, to fret about the things that are going on in life and the circumstances and COVID-19 and, and just various things that are going on uh, that we're just so uncertain about. Uh, we don't need to fret about the plans of God because uh, the Bible says in Isaiah 55, we'll go there. Isaiah 55 and verse 8. Isaiah writes, he says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so, my, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The, the plan of God and the, the things that God is doing in our lives is, is so, so many people try to figure it out and try to uh, make a plan through it and uh, but really, if we just say, God, I'm willing, I'm serving, and I'm going to do what you want me to do today, uh, God will lead you to that next step. And then he says in First Timothy, now unto King Eternal, Immortal. Um, as I said earlier, the death of Christ probably uh, brought Paul uh, some relief. He was probably a little happy as an unsaved man. Uh, the fact that this man who was turning Judaism upside down and changing everything, and uh, so many people were following Christ, and uh, Paul was probably a little relieved at the death of Jesus Christ. But the grave couldn't hold him. The guards, the tomb garb, they couldn't hold him. And we know uh, today, uh, 
for a certainty that Christ is risen again. Uh, he is immortal. Uh, even though he is immortal, he died for you and me. Uh, he set us free from sin's debt. And then he says invisible. Uh, this uh, is true. Uh, we don't see him right now. We have the Holy Spirit as uh, the comforter. Uh, but thank the Lord that he is coming again and we and every eye shall see him, as it says in Revelation 1.7. Uh, he is the only uh, wise God, it says here. Uh, he is the only wise God, uh, the only wise God. And we know that all knowledge uh, comes from, from God, comes from, uh, from the, the source of everything. Um, and then the wisdom, that proper application of knowledge uh, comes from the Lord. The Bible says in Proverbs, I have it written down here, Proverbs 2, verse 6, For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge, and understanding it is only through the Lord that we can have uh, wisdom and knowledge and understanding uh, that is for, for certain truth. And then lastly, he says, be honor and glory forever and ever. Why does he uh, deserve honor and glory? Well, he saved us. Uh, he forgave us. He pardoned us. Uh, he counted us faithful. Uh, he put us into the ministry. Uh, every single Christian, uh, no matter who you are, how young or old you are, you're all in the ministry. You're all uh, serving God. Uh, you all should be in some way. And he also he shows us mercy and grace. And we're so thankful uh, just how good God is to us and how he still wants to use us despite of who we are. So all of us are in God's service. We are all ministers of God. And God has removed every single barrier for us to serve Him. And so I'm going to ask you today, how will you be the minister of Christ to someone uh, in need today? And I'd like to thank you for listening and I hope that you have a good day today. And thank you. Um, I'd like to uh, see you again next week. Take care.